a good optimal glycemic control can prevent uh, particularly myocardial cardiovascular complications. But the beauty is the combination of these two together, such as in the Act to Diet trial, has been quite efficacious and quite safe as well. We saw good reduction in H1C, specifically in those people who had the higher rates of HB1C. We had patients who had longer duration of diabetes with established cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular risk. The event rates did not go up. So we are here to briefly summarize the second episode of uh, Act II program, which was focused on the use of sulfonylureas management of diabetes, but also touching two important uh, topics, like the difference between sulfonylureas and the safety of sulfonylureas. So let's start with the first uh, presenter, Dr. Uh, 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 Mohamed Husseini, which was speaking about uh, the use of a sulfonylureas in management of diabetes. Mohamed, please. Thank, thank you, Antonio. Well, the, the fact of the matter, we have high prevalence of diabetes globally. Roughly 11% of the globe have diabetes. And unfortunately, the vast majority are not well controlled. We as healthcare professionals, we tend to intensify treatment a bit too late when five, six years have gone and maybe the HbA1c is too high. Sulfonylureas are described in the guidelines as a highly efficacious line of therapy. The modern sulfonylurea, such as glycoside MR, have low rates of hypoglycemia and are neutral with regards to weight gain. So all the concerns of healthcare professionals of the inertia of I'm concerned about the weight of my patient or the hypoglycemia are probably um, not too much of a concern when it comes to glycoside MR. Cost effectiveness is also very important because 80% of the globe live in low or middle income countries. Now, we focus sometimes on the cardiorena protection, specifically of HDL2 inhibitors. But the beauty is the combination of these two together, such as in the Act to Diet trial, has been quite efficacious and quite safe as well. We saw good reduction in H1C, specifically in those people who had the higher rates of HB1C. So I personally feel that we need to act quickly, we need to intensify the treatment timely, and to th think significantly of sulfonylurea, specifically the modern sulfonylurea such as glycoside MR, because of their power of lowering HB1C in a safe manner with minimal hypoglycemia. So you already introduced uh, one important topic, which was covered by myself, if all the sulfonylureas are equal. And uh, we have to remember that one of the most uh, irrelevant side effects of sulfonylureas is the risk of hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia can be itself a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And, and of course, it's a very, very bad experience and also uh, leading to a premature uh, dementia. So it's very important to avoid uh, uh, these uh, situations. And many, many evidence, the guide study, uh, the um, let's say the study coming uh, uh, even from the advance, particularly when you compare advance with the other two studies performed, like ACCORD, the VADT to show how the um, a good optimal glycemic control can prevent the particularly myocard cardiovascular complications in the people with diabetes, but with long duration of diabetes, you know that we are failing. But if you look in the in the different study, in particularly in the advanced, you find a very low. Uh, rate of hypoglycemia related to the use of a glycoside, Com particularly when glycoside has been compared to both glimepiride and gliburide. So this is very relevant because we can say that the sulfonylureas in terms of 
let's say, risk of hypoglycemia are very different. And when we also had a, a, a study looking at the cardiovascular risk for mortality, it was confirmed that the glycolanzide was the, uh, having the less risk compared with the others. So we can be really reassured that the use of uh, uh, the glycoside is uh, related to a low risk of hypoglycemia, particularly compared with the, the other uh, sulfonyl ureas. And now about the safety of the sulfonyl ureas, we will have more deep explanation from Sanjay, please. Thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, it's important that we should have the confidence in using sulfonylurea. Given the era today where guidelines are focusing more on newer antihypoglycemic agents, which change outcomes, are sulfonylurea still relevant today in clinical practice is a key question. Now, often it is referred that there is a higher rate of hypoglycemia, that we tend to get with sulfonylureas. Uh, people do talk about cardiovascular safety with sulfonylureas. If you look at the new evidence that has been published in recent years, we, and that has been spoken during the course of the last two lectures, we find that there is sufficient evidence to show that hypoglycemia rates with glycoside modified release is extremely low, and we should be quite confident in prescribing this drug, particularly in patients who are at a high risk for hypoglycemia. If you look at the cardiovascular safety, and if you look at the population that was include, in, included in the advanced study, we had patients who had longer duration of diabetes with established cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular risk. The event rates did not go up. There was benefit in terms of nephropathy and clearly, there was 21% reduction in and 30% reduction in the albuminuria, as well as slowing down of the progression of the kidney disease. Uh, I want to reiterate to say that today, sulfonylureas continue to be the mainstay of treatment for diabetes in majority of the world. We do see a good A1C lowering with low rates of hypoglycemia and with no increase rates of cardiovascular events, which brings that safety is good, control of A1C is good, and often when we talk about intensifications and we try to get our A1Cs lowered to maybe 6.5 or lower than 7%, the, the risk of hypoglycemia remains important. But if we are able to get an agent where we are confident that if we titrate it sensibly, then the hypoglycemia rates will be lower, then that will give us a huge boost in terms of treatment of our patients. If you look at the comparison of all the sulfonylureas, glycoside modified release remains to have the lowest hypoglycemia rates. So do use sulfonylureas in a clinical practice, combine it with other agents, adjust the dosages as required be, depending on the clinical situation that you're treating with. And I think you would have a good A1C reduction with all the safety profile. Thank you again also to you. And now let's conclude. This is second episode. This is the second step of our journey in the to understand the, the role of uh, sulfonylureas today in diabetes management, I think was very useful to reassure about the safety of sulfonylureas in the management of diabetes, and also that there is a huge difference between the, the different uh, sulfonylureas. So thank you everybody for joining us, and uh, let's uh, meet again in the third episode of this uh, project. Post your questions in the comment box. The experts will reply and the channel secretariat will post their feedback. Unlock full Act T 2D episode series. Click the access links in the description box below.